details about a family you may have heard of. The Willis clan was a musical family from Nashville who were rising stars in the entertainment industry. America fell in love with them on America's Got Talent, and they even landed their own reality TV show. But a few years ago, a dark family secret was uncovered that would change everything for them. Last week, I had the chance to sit down with them for their first television interview about it all. Watch. They were known as the American Von Trapp family. Jessica. Jeremiah. Jenny. Jeanette. Jackson. Jedi. Jasmine. Juliet. Jamie. Joy. Jager. Cheetah. We're the Willis clan. Hi. Twelve children, all gifted musicians, dancing, singing, and performing together. First winning hearts during an appearance on America's Got Talent in 2014. Led by their dad, Toby, who was the band's sound engineer, and their mom, Brenda, their homeschool teacher. How adorable we is have this all family? Of them with us. The Willis clan was so popular, they even signed on for a reality TV show on TLC. Every family has a story, and this one is ours. Their lives were seemingly perfect, but then a dark secret emerged. In September 2016, Toby Willis was arrested and charged with four counts of child rape. His victims, some of his own daughters. In 2017, he was convicted and sentenced to 40 years in prison. Now the rest of the family is picking up the broken pieces and reinventing themselves, opening up and speaking out through new music. Joining me now is the current Willis clan band. Jennifer Willis McDowell, Jeanette Willis Pyatt, Jasmine Willis, Jeremiah Willis, Jedediah Willis, and Jackson Willis. Good morning to you all. What an emotional moment there to hear your story and then hear your beautiful voice singing and sort of back at it, still standing. Um, let's just start with earlier in your lives. And you guys are kids and you're growing up. And I know you, you three young women have, have been open about the fact that you were victims of your father. Yeah. You didn't know. You, 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 the three of you, you, you didn't talk about it. Is that, is that the case? Well, yeah, when we were younger, we definitely did not talk about it um, to each other, especially when you're, when you're a child, you don't have the vocabulary to talk about it. And also, you're still learning like what's appropriate and what's not. So you aren't always clear when something happens to you if it's wrong or not. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's a person of trust. So you assume right. there's an assumption that this person's not going to hurt me. Right, exactly. What they do is, do is okay. Would you, outside of what was going on with the abuse in him, was it, would you describe it as a happy childhood? There are definitely a lot of happy moments. Um, as we got older and we started performing more, the schedule started getting a lot more rigorous and things started becoming um, a lot more, there was a lot more pressure and um, things started to develop after that. But when we were really young, I think it was a very happy childhood. So then, then you become famous, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're on America's Got Talent, you get your own reality show. And was there a conscious memory at that time? Was there a conscious thought of, we have a secret? I mean, this could come out. For me, it didn't, it wasn't as um, conscious of a secret. It was more of just um, the reality of, okay, we talk about this, and, we and I'm not going to talk about this. So it wasn't as much of a, I'm holding a secret, um, because it was normalized in my mind and in my life. Yeah, especially when we started the TV show, our daily life started feeling like a performance. Mm -hmm. And so when you get on stage, you put your best foot forward. And so our daily life started to feel like that as well. Yep. The, um, you guys, uh, I know th that there was physical abuse of the, of the young men in your family, including the three of you. Mm -hmm. um, and so how do you remember growing up thinking about your dad? I mean, do you remember thinking about him as a loving person or as someone who would hurt you? Honestly, just because something is normal doesn't mean it's right. And our childhood felt normal to us. And only since um, we've been able to step back and have time away from our father that we've been able to realize that we did not have a normal childhood and it was not right. Mm -hmm. The um, abuse first emerged within the family. How? How did you guys first start talking to each other and putting together... Well, in the in the later years, like right before our dad was arrested, there were we would talk about. Everyone knew there was something going on. Obviously, the. 
the um, like physical abuse and things like that um, was apparent, like everyone in the family knew about that, but the sexual abuse was something that was very secret. And each of us um, that experienced it, experienced it on our own in secret. So there was never anyone else in the room and something. So it was kind of this unsaid thing that we knew there was something else going on, but we didn't like specifically talk about it. Mm -hmm. and, and even if I could jump in really quick, even on the physical abuse, I don't think we ever used those words. We didn't know to right. attach the the um, actual actions with the correct terminology. And I think that was a big thing that held us back. And, and often, you know, kids just think it's discipline and this, this, mm -hmm. this is how, you know, we've, we've misbehaved and this is the consequence for misbehavior. Back in 2016, our father was arrested for sexual abuse. And people were even more shocked when they found out that it was us girls. When all this information finally came to the surface, it changed our lives in an instant. In that moment, it really felt like our life had just shattered. We stepped away from all of our social platforms and took some time to heal and to process what we had just gone through. We just said, what, what are we going to do? How are we going to go on from here? How are we going to put our life back together? Abuse affects a lot of areas of life, so it can take a while to process through that, and that's a journey that we're only starting. Mm. Those were the current members of the Willis clan talking about the abuse they suffered at the hands of their father. I sat down with them last week about what they went through after the abuse was made public. Watch. So what was the moment? Because I know your older sister, who she wrote a very compelling online account of what had happened to her and her own journey and described dealing with what she referred to as a monster in the shadows. Mm -hmm. um, meaning your dad saying our family system was disturbingly sick. Mm -hmm. So how did you first learn about that? What got the conversation going? Honestly, the first time we ever talked about it openly was after um, TBI, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, came to one of our shows and started questioning us. And um, we, after that show, when they started questioning us and stuff, then we started looking at each other and saying, what is actually going on here? And I can, it was, that night was the most just intense night of my life because I started to realize what had happened to all of my siblings as well and really started to understand what had actually happened to me. Mm -hmm. What was that like talking to your sisters for the first time and realizing it wasn't just me? Mm -hmm. I'm not, I mean, I would imagine there'd be, there'd be horror mm -hmm. and, and there might be a level of relief too. Definitely, definitely knowing that um, you're not alone and this isn't something unique, unfortunately, um, and that there are people that can walk with you through that hard time. Um, but then also, yeah, just knowing what, ha you know, what happened to, um, to other members of the family was, was sickening in, in that way. How about you guys when you heard it? I still don't even really know how to process it. It's not something that you expect. It's not something that you want. Um, and it's something that we hope never happens again. But unfortunately, it's extremely common. Yep. Extremely common. And so we want to try with everything that we do to let people know that they're not alone, that there are people that can help. There are organizations, there are professionals, mm -hmm. places that you can call and they can give you legal advice. They can give you moral support, whatever you need. And we want to do everything we can to point, pe point people in the right direction. Yeah. That you don't have to figure it out on your own. Mm -hmm. You're not equipped and you sh shouldn't be expected to. Right. The, the, the way your father was originally outed to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation um, was not through a family member. It was through an outsider, right, who filed a complaint or a report. Mm -hmm. Do we know who that is? There's, I think there's actually a multiple people that yeah. kind of stepped forward at the same time. And that's something that we are very, very thankful for because of the system that we are in. I don't know that any of us were in the position to be able to step forward. And so there were a lot of people around us who did that for us that we were so, so thankful that they, they started to tell our story or at least said, you know, someone needs to look into this. Mm -hmm. So we're really thankful for that. So let me start with you on this one, Jackson. Do you, everything comes out. And now you're looking at your dad, and I imagine you're looking at your mom and wondering, w what next? What, what questions did you have for your parents when this started to emerge? Well, in the moment, there was so much to process that I was honestly thinking about myself and my younger siblings first. Because as the, when it started, 
they take uh, the agents took all the adults separately and started questioning them. And I was 18 at the time, and so I was the I was the youngest adult, mm -hmm. and they left me with all the kids. And I was like, Am I going to see my mom again? Am I going to see my siblings again? So in that moment, I was more just worried about them whether or not they were going to come back at all. Mm -hmm. And when they did, and after so much came out and after further investigation, uh, the agents found my mom to be innocent and to be a fellow victim of my, uh, the same situation that my sister's were in. She was being and, physically abused by him. Yeah. Do you, do you blame your mom? Not at all. Um, as Jack was saying, that she was every much a victim, you know, in every way that we were as well. And, you know, as, like, the years leading up to our, our dad being arrested, you know, when we tried to talk to our mom, we were never, you know, very specific with what happened, just kind of like there's something going on. And she would always try to find out information and say, like, how can I help you? What can I do? And, um, you know, but she was also, like I said, a victim as well. So she had the same questions that we had and that feeling of just being alone, not knowing what to do. We were all in the same boat. And being afraid. I mean, abuse. Mm -hmm. Oh, abuse yeah. That is one of the afraid. biggest things. Yeah. yeah. So you turn to the music. I mean, you're a musical family from, from birth and, and faith, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You're a very faithful family. And I wondered when I was reading your story, let me ask you, Jasmine, whether your faith was ever tested, whether you ever questioned. Your it was definitely tested, but honestly, our faith is what brought us through, and we're so thankful that we had that. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Jedi? I mean, you guys start writing music again, and was that cathartic? And what was the thought like of reemerging publicly at, because this is a very public outing of your dad and his, his crimes. Well, I am really the only one that does not write music a ton. <laughs> so um, it was very, it was, I, was, I really didn't know if we were ever going to come back out. I kind of felt like we were kind of just going to go down and not like reemerge at all. Um, but it was really cool to get back together and uh, experience something we've done for so long but in a totally different way. We got the band back together. We got the band back together, and the band is rocking. Now, the, the new album is called Speak My Mind, mm -hmm. which is 100% perfect, right? And what, what is the message with that? What do you want people to know? The album is, um, is to promote um, hope, um, and there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There can be joy and life and love after any hard situation. Um, and there's a lot of different, um, a lot of different singers on the album. There's a lot of different viewpoints. There's a lot of different writers. Um, and uh, we're just speaking our mind. We're telling our story in the hope that that might help someone else have the courage to speak their mind. How are the little ones in your family doing? They're, you know, they're doing really, really well. Um, uh, they're not part of the band anymore. Uh, a six-year-old doesn't need a full-time job. Right. So, <laughs> right. But they're at home. They're going through the healing process as well and focus on being kids, you know. And you guys are you're with your mom still, but do you have anything to do with your dad? Not currently, no. no. Okay. And so we can hear you guys out. You're going on tour, or what are you going to do with this album? Yes, we are actually currently on tour. We're going to be in Michigan uh, coming up uh, and everywhere and <laughs> we're touring a ton but yeah the album is out now and we're really really excited about that and as Jira is saying there's like a lot of different viewpoints and this, the album is kind of our journey so far mm -hmm. in our healing process you know just watching you all together and how loving you are toward one another backstage and out here uh, notwithstanding the story you just told us I can't help but look at you and feel how lucky you are you know to yeah. have each other to have the love you have amidst mm -hmm. one another um, and to be able to have the presence of mind to hopefully put this in perspective and, mm -hmm. and work on the healing, right? Yeah. It takes work. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. Check I'd, that box. It's not, like, don't let this fool you. We don't always get along. <laughs> <laughs> so you're normal. We are okay. normal. And that's something that I think with our TLC show, like, they definitely wanted to portray this picture of, like, this picture-perfect family and everyone always gets along. And we are normal in that sense that things are hard and we have to struggle through stuff and there's different opinions and there's different viewpoints and people are at different places in their life. And so we're just finding a way to work together. And um, But there's, there's love and there's faith. Yes. Mm -hmm. All the best to you guys. Good luck with it. Thank you for being here. The new album from the Willis Clan, Speak My Mind, is out now. We'll be right back.